Welcome back, Seafood Devon fam. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of the most important concepts uh, about fighting tactics in Wing Chun. The reason I waited so long to do this one is because now that you have the foundation, I hope all of you are at home practicing the Sunim Tao, practicing foundation, practicing those basic, practicing your basic movement, those things we learned, because now when you have those things, that's your structure, then you can build on now the fighting tactics, how you actually put them into application, will start to make sense, okay? So, you've heard me mention one before, Loi Lao Hoi Song. This one means you meet what comes, you follow what goes. Goes on to say, on loss of contact, you rush in. All these things passed down are called Quen Quit. So, you can, incredibly useful, these ones are passed down because over hundreds of years, most people taking these, uh, the Wing Chun, couldn't read or write, so they passed down these sayings, almost like sing-song sayings, ways to remember the concepts, okay? Help them to remember the concepts for fighting. So K-U-E-N, new word, K-U-I-T. You can look them up, study them, memorize them, and see, they're all very deep. You can put each one into practice. Many, many, many of them, okay? I can't go over all of them with you here. So we're gonna talk about just the most basic ones, okay? The Lo Lao Hoi Song, the first one, you mean what comes, follow what goes. So, ask Napoleon to come back here. Okay, meet what comes. We already talked about when I was talking about the importance of Chi Sao. He's whatever force coming here. Okay, I'm gonna meet this force. That way, I have my contact here. Okay, follow what goes means if he's trying to move away, I'm gonna follow him through. Okay, this one's important on loss of contact rush in. What does it mean? It means that loss of contact, he can jump back, he's going to jump back, kick me, or jump back, throw a big punch, wind up, whatever. Or even here, loss of contact, if he pulls his fist away, means he's going to be throwing a big punch after that, okay? Wind up. All those things, same thing. Here's Wing Chun, a simple concept for you to follow. It doesn't matter the reason. Loss of contact, he, oh, I rush in, I rush in, I always rush in. Anytime something disappears, I rush in like that, okay? That fills that void, it makes it not dangerous. Loss of contact in a fight is a problem, it's an emergency. So if, we, if Napoleon's fighting me, loss of contact means I'm gonna be striking him. Loss of contact means I'm gonna be kicking him. Okay, that's always a problem. It's always someone else taking, you have to take control, you always, always in Wing Chun, our solution is rush in, okay? Even if you can't remember the other thing, always just remember, you attack, attack, always rush in. That's our solution to every problem is attack, okay? Keeps it simple for yourself. Fighting can be very chaotic and confusing. You have to make it simple for yourself. So, the other one, now we'll talk about some more specifics, okay? So, here we are fighting again. Anytime my opponent moves, changes his position, he changes for a reason, okay? Usually to take advantage of me, so he's gonna change his position. But anytime my opponent moves, not so much for Wing Chun fighters, you should be getting very good so you can stay stable in your movement. But even for the best person I'm moving, if I'm moving here, okay, there's a split moment. As I move, my center is not gonna be strong. That's when you can attack. That's your chance to rush in and attack. Put more energy forward, okay? So if I'm fighting with Napoleon, he suddenly, I sent him, I sent his motion, I feel a move, whoa. That's when I rush, okay? Energy forth. If I rush then, he can't have a strong stance because he's moving. So when he feels me move, if he feels me go this way, doesn't take much because now I don't have proper footing, okay? So that's the contact's important. You have this contact, you feel them move, that's when you can do your rush. You throw your energy forward, it doesn't have to be fancy. Lance out, whatever, you throw your energy forward. You can knock them off balance, knock them back. But that's the moment, you have to choose it about the time and choose the moment, okay? So, the next one we're gonna talk about is changing your angle, okay? We talked about this way back, but I wanna revisit this. All, these are all part of the part of fighting concepts. So let's say, here we are again, Napoleon and I are fighting. Maybe he's getting overwhelmed, okay? So, boom, boom, too many, oh, right away, he's gonna change his angle, all right? Just like the motion. Now, because he's the one that moved, he changed his angle. He can now take advantage because all my energy, all about energy, all my energy is this way, all his energy is this way, he can now rush forward again. 
Again, rush in, same solution. Then I turn, I'm fighting him again. Oh, he changes angle again. He rushes forward again. Again, take advantage, okay? I'll never be able to withstand his forward energy if I'm facing the wrong direction. Only way I have a chance if we're facing head on. So you see, as soon as I face him head on, he wants to go somewhere else. Okay, that's the nature of Wing Chun. As soon as someone faces you head on, you go, you change the angle. The wooden dummy teaches you that, okay? So, the second, here's another important one of the Quen Kui, the pass on, it says, be ferocious when attacking, okay? And to, to make your opponent back up. So, this one, same thing with the other ones, they're attack, attack, attack. So when I'm attacking, my energy here, all I wanna do with that energy is make him go back. So for me, if he's coming at me, he wants me, oh, just to back, that's it. You see this motion, even if it's subtle. He attacks ferociously. The second I'm here, I've lost the situation. So come forward again if one. He's here, attack, all his energy goes forward. Even if I hit him, I have no stance here. I'm off my off balance. You, we already know what it takes to develop power. So of course he has a chance. Of course he has a chance to get hit coming in like this. But he has his full body weight. We already learned the structure of punching. His full body weight is rushing forward. Me, I just punch with my arm if I'm falling back. He for sure will win the exchange if he's rushing and I'm backing up. In Wing Chun, okay? My students know this. When I'm sparring with my students, I'm always, 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 always trying to get them, make them back up the whole time. The whole time, they move, I follow. They move, I follow, always getting them back up. Okay, in sparring, it's my whole concept. Get people to back up, because it allows you to do everything, makes all they can do is try to respond. Same in a real situation. Okay, so thank you, point. So, this other one, okay. Actually, I think almost the most important secret but these ones you just have to read. You say you just read one. You can't just read it. You have to think about what they're trying to tell you. It gets passed down hundreds of years for a reason. Okay. Next one says, "Be commanding in your fighting demeanor." What does that mean? Be commanding in your fighting demeanor. So, I'll tell you, take you back. One thing struck me. I never forgot it. I was in grade three, I think. Don't know why we're watching nature videos uh, in school. Probably for science or something like that. Talk predators and prey. No idea. Anyhow, in the 70s. So, watching a film, then I saw this film. You probably seen this old news for you. There's a grizzly bear. Grizzly bear coming up to a deer carcass. He's trying to eat that deer carcass. Then there's a wolverine comes up. Okay? Very small. Maybe if you add the size one tenth of the size of the bear. One tenth. In weight, for sure. This wolverine starts going so crazy. This bear is probably starving. He really wants to eat this deer. But the wolverine, he's galashing out. He's exploding. The final, the bear is just gives up, backs away, turns tail, and runs. Runs away from something of one-tenth of his size. Actually, the bear, if he wanted to, I'm sure could have killed the wolverine. Really, not much, too much of a problem. Because could put him in his mouth. What the, the wolverine brought, he was so commanding with his fighting demeanor that the bear just didn't want to deal with it. So how do you do that? And I'll tell you a secret, okay? This actually is an alchemy process, a process of alchemy. You have, everyone has within them, you may not have discovered it yet, everyone has within them a fighting spirit, okay? Part of your spirit. In emergency, when you need to use your Kung Fu, defend yourself, your family, save your life, you have to be able to access Activate your fighting spirit. If you can, you activate that spirit, they will, they can sense your opponent. Yeah, I've seen it in their eyes many times, okay? Use this in fighting. You see they already give up because they don't have, most people can't access it. They see your energy and you see them just, they don't want, can't deal with it, okay? Just like the bear can't deal with the wolverine. You have to focus you have to find that spot, you have to activate that spirit. So, you can do that a number of different ways. One way you can do it, actually, the only way that this will work for you, you start to have to start to practice in sparring. So what sparring is, in Kung Fu, you, you know, see in boxing, they have lots of different ways, people use equipment and everything. Traditionally, actually, in Kung Fu schools, if you look back old footage, 
the management students, everything else, people, kung fu people, we don't really use those equipment when sparring. Okay, so and then how do you do that without really hurting people? Actually, it's not so hard. It teaches you control as well. In kung fu, when we're sparring, normally we do open hand attack. So what create open attack just hit someone, but you just get hit open hand, not full full force. There's no big deal. Also trains you to get hit and get comfortable taking hits. It's important too. Okay, don't want to be a surprise. So the sparring aspect, you may say to yourself now, I don't have a Wing Chun friend who wants to spar with me. Even better, lucky for you, because the best thing you can do is spar with someone who's not doing Wing Chun, okay? I told you before, you're not gonna be, when you have to defend your life in an emergency, what are the strange chances you're gonna find a Kung Fu brother who's trying to hurt you? That's not gonna happen. So the person, if you can spar, whether you spar with someone that's just using street fighting techniques or throwing big punches or whatever, okay, or you practice someone who uses boxing, MMA, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, sparring with those people is going to be much more useful, much better practice. Then you use your Wing Chun skills against them. And practice. Lots of other people, even a higher level Kung Fu people, they don't want to spar with people. They're worried about losing and looking bad. That's the dumbest thing you can do. Okay? I would love to spar with you. I don't care. So you win. Who cares? Doesn't matter. All right? That's how I learn from things. That's how you, as a martial artist, how are you going to learn? How are you going to tell if your techniques are working? How are you going to tell if you can execute them if you don't try them, if you don't try to try them with someone who's resisting, who doesn't want you to, who's trying to fight back? Okay? That's going to be most useful. So partner, brother, friend, whatever they can do, just tell them you're trying to learn. You can help them learn. You're not going to punch them full fist. You just, you enter and tap. Even when Napoleon and I, for instance, we were sparring, sparring, if, if Napoleon gets in, he's going to come close to hitting me, he stops his punch, but I know he hit me, okay? He doesn't have to hit me for me. To, uh, in Kung Fu, we know it's a hit, okay? If you close, stop, punch here. For you at home, you don't do that. You use open hand for now. It's a mistake, then it's just slap, no big deal, okay? The sparring part is really important. So, you have to find someone willing to help you. If for some reason, none of your friends then get some, some new friends who will help you, but if none of your friends will help you, then at the very least, set up a stationary target, so whether it's your punching bag on a chair, something like that, that you can practice, you can practice your circle motion, you can practice coming strike, move away. In your head, you have to pretend, you get used to pretend it's your opponent, okay? Make that fighting spirit. You do it correctly, okay? When you're approaching them, they see your intensity, actually you can capture their spirit. So you capture their spirit, you can see you create a weakness in them. Already, even if they're not physically backing up, mentally they are backing up. Same thing, you use attack, attack, rush in. All right, once you break their spirit, you capture their spirit, you rush in. That's a deep secret. So, the, the last reason I want you to understand about this, if you don't do that, you don't have some active way, if you're only just practicing the skills like this, like in Sunim Tao, that's the first step. If you don't have an active way of practicing, then this is what I think Bruce Lee calls, calls dry land swimming, okay? As training, what he means is this. Coincidentally, I'm also a swim coach, okay? So let's imagine you and I spend hours and hours here together. Breaststroke is my, breaststroke is my specialty, so I'm teaching you breaststroke. I teach you the porpoise mobile, I teach you to dive shoulders up, all those to chin down, start to look really good, you, you press into the Y, all these different things for swimming. Then one day, you're walking along with your friend. Whoops, you're not paying attention, you daydream. You fall in the water. Your friend says, oh, no problem, he's a breaststroke expert. Looks over, there you go sinking down. Why'd you go sinking down? Because you've never been in the water before. So you learn some techniques and everything looks perfect, but you don't, need, don't know what it feels like to be in the water. So this is the same thing, okay? All these skills that you're learning, okay? Changing moves and changing to all this other stuff, can't do it just on dry land. Have to do it with a resisting opponent. That way, it helps me as your teacher because you can do these things, you try them. If it's not working, we'll find out how to adjust it, change it, so it will work for you. But if you're never using any of the techniques with a resisting, someone resisting or trying to hit you back, then you're never gonna know if it works. How can you test it? You can't test it against the air, air doesn't hit back, okay? so. You remember those fundamentals? Try to remember the concept of changing your angle, the rushing and loss of contact. Wing Chun, okay, our solution to the problem. It's attack, attack, attack. 
If you remember that, that's the basic, okay? Probably that's all you remember in emergency. You just say, I have to rush an attack. Good, that's the basic. Okay, you get them backing up your attack. That's number one, most important. The rest will come after, okay? Practice those techniques. I want you to try to find someone, okay? In your family or whatever who start, you just start very light, make it nice for them. Just very light, have no problem. Then you start sparring. At least then you can practice your movement. You can start practice how to move around, how to gain entry, okay? We're gonna work on those things. Now we're gonna start moving on to more advanced techniques. I'm excited. You have the basics. Let's go practice. Until next time, Secret Devin Pan, Ada Morals, Wing Chun.